Yeah, we're going to get started real soon. I'm pretty nervous about this one, I'll tell you the truth. It's just... I know what a big deal this album is to a lot of you, so... You know what I'm saying? Come on, is it going on or not? Cocksucker. There we go. Look at that. All right, we're ready to start. Welcome to Vinyl Junkies, ladies and gentlemen. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a little nervous about this one. I'm going to be live streaming my very first ever listen of um, what everybody seems to be calling, uh, well, what everyone has called a masterpiece, Radiohead's uh, 1997 album, their third record, OK Computer. Um, I will be doing all of the records in um, chronological order. So that's to say that I've already done Pablo, honey, and I've already done Pablo, 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 honey. Uh, and I've already done, uh, what do you call it? The other one there, right after the bends. Yeah, I did the bends yesterday. And um, I'll tell you a little bit of, about those before I get started on this. If you haven't liked the video, please like it. If you want to see the rest of the uh, first time impressions of the entire Radiohead catalog, then subscribe to our channel because more are coming. I got another four albums after this. Okie doke. So, as mentioned, um, feel a little nervous about this one because, well, I know what a big deal the record is. And somehow it's gotten past my radar this entire time. God only knows how, but uh, it has. So, listening to the record, what is it now, 23 years after the fact? Yeah, man, 23 years after the fact, all has been said and done uh, with all of this attention that's been placed on um, Pitchfork awarding, fucking Pitchfork, uh, Fiona Apple's new album, the first 10 out of 10 out of uh, since 1997's OK Computer. So I know OK Computer was given a perfect whatever as well and um after listening to the first two records i gotta tell you i'm kind of nervous that i'm not going to like the record okay uh there's a few reasons for that first reason i didn't like the first one i didn't like uh, pablo honey pablo pablo did you wash your ass I didn't like Pablo Honey at all. The second one, The Bends, I kind of liked it. I liked it as I was listening to the record song by song, and I liked Side 2 a lot more than Side 1. But then, and after listening to it, I had t said during the show that um, I would have bought the record if i was if i was 50 years old back th if i was 50 years old back when it came out in 95 i wouldn't have bought the record but if i would have bought the record when it originally came out at my original age i was 25 when it came out i would have picked it up you know so now i'm kind of curious about this one I was 27 years old in 97, so what have I picked up the record if I had heard it back then? Number one, that's my first question. Number two, second question, which I'll answer at the end of the show, obviously, is if I was 50, if I was this age in 97, would I still pick up the album? Is it this masterpiece? Will I hear that immediately or not? Number two. Number three, the part that probably scares me the most and the part that makes me think that maybe not, maybe I'm not going to like it, is... Um, fuck is he gonna keep sounding like bongo the vocals man is, is, is am i just gonna keep hearing bongo all the way through the problem that i had with the first two is that i keep hearing bongo over and over and over again and it's like i don't like you too so uh i'm just curious to see if that's the case now i've heard all the hype i've had this conversation about never having heard any radiohead prior to now many times with other people and the reactions are always kind of the same the first one that i think of all the time is um my friend Matt Hessler, who uh, used to be the former marketing guy at uh, Vinyl Me Please. And 
I just remember, I, I mean, because it's a topic that seems to be so incredulous to some people, you know, I remember us talking over the phone at one point and uh, me mentioning that I'd never listened to OK Computer before. And his voice changed completely. It's like, you've got to be kidding. And it's like, no, dude, I'm not kidding. I haven't heard the album before. That was four years ago. Okay. Then I have a lot of folks who I know through the groups, through vinyl junkies, uh, you know, who have great record collections and um, tell me that it's a masterpiece. But then there's Bongo. And if it sounds like Bongo, I know. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what to expect. I'm fucking nervous about disappointing you, for fuck's sake. Um, but I'm going to say what I have to say. The one thing that I have noticed, though, all right? You guys, you know what you told me? You told me, make sure that you get properly refreshed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some ice in my jam jar over here. All right? Unfortunately, it means I won't be able to uh, drink anything tonight. Unless I make it to... Anyway, because it's my very last sip of Chivas Regal. So uh, for those of you who are going to be around tonight for the uh, virus broadcasts, those are our regular broadcasts. Um, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so that's in about five hours. See that? Didn't that sound like a jazz club? You don't believe me? Pick up any old jazz record in a club, a live jazz record. What you do is you always hear the ice. You hear the ice and the glass is tinkling. Pick up an old um, Bill Evans record. You'll see. Don't take my word for it. Okay, so I'm going to get started on this. Audrey Berry Bongo uh, is the lead singer of, uh, of, of U2. I don't like him. I would like to say that if I don't like it, I'm sorry, and uh, my opinion doesn't count for anything. I consider it absolutely obnoxious to uh, great art, certainly by a score. So in other words, you know, if you're going and buy an album because Pitchfork gave it a high score, fuck, that's just the dumbest fucking thing in the world, really. A great score, a great score on art? No, nah, man. I think uh, the best way to absorb art is to listen, hang out, share thoughts. You don't have to be a critic. You don't have to be a critic. People like different things. Your opinion doesn't matter for shit. Neither does mine. Just listen. Keep an open mind and remember what art does. It brings us together. It shouldn't start nerd fights on the fucking internet. Stop being an asshole. Ah. Oh. Writing about music is like dancing about architecture. Who said that? Frank Zappa? Elvis Costello? Somebody did. But whoever said it was right. All right. So um, what I'm going to do is this year I got it. It's a double LP, which already scares me because I hope that doesn't mean I don't like the record. I really want to like this record. And if it's a double LP, it'll be extra painful. So Brooke sent me this uh patron brooke thank you so much these are the inner covers we do have it available in the store at vinyljunkies.store and um i looked at the records prior to turning the camera on and uh i see that there's no numbers to the sides but it's eeny meeny miny mo so what i'm going to do is assume that eeny is side one and if it isn't, then you got to stop me immediately by telling me in the comments that Eni is not side one. And, um, because I don't know, there's no song titles, there's no nothing on the vinyl. Just, it's almost like a white label. All right? Why don't we do this? If you haven't already, please, um, you know other Radiohead fans, share. Like the video. And, um, yeah, here we go. We're going to play side Eni, song one. Please tell me immediately if it's not the right side. Here goes nothing.
the end um, I really like the music I hear electronic elements that I enjoy uh, I hear something that I wasn't expecting which is post rock elements I like Johnny Greenwood that I th I think that's what I've decided I think I like his guitar playing so uh, probably the highlight of all Radiohead for me at this point is uh, Wait a second, you guys already said supposedly it gets really electronic and they drop the rock and roll completely. I don't know. But all I know is that I hear a guitar player that I like. I like his tone. I like the way it is that he uses his space. I like uh, I like the textures that he creates. And um, to me, for an artist to take post-rock elements and do that with them, it was interesting. Very swirly. I liked it. I'm hearing bongo though, man. Uh, the best part about Tom uh, York's voice is uh, the fact that he doesn't sing very much on the song, because all I hear is bongo. And you have to you have to understand. I don't. I didn't know that he sounded like bongo before I started all this. So whenever it is that I listen to this shit, you know what it is that I see? I don't know what Tom York looks like. I swear I don't. I don't know what Tom York looks like. So when I hear the lyrics, when I hear the singing, you know who I think of? Fucking right. Fucking bongo and his stupid glasses. So that's the problem that I'm having right now. I didn't even anticipate it. I don't know what bongo looks like. I don't know what Johnny Greenwood looks like. I don't know what these guys are. So when I hear these words, all I fucking see is bongo in my head. Acting like an asshole on some stadium tour. All right, we're going to continue. Would this album work as an instrumental? Uh, is there... Is there any, uh, is this album available? I mean, I'm asking the question, but I'm going to see how the question evolves throughout the whole thing. But is this album available as an instrumental? No lyrics. Because already it's like the words, if anything, took away from me. Okay, it's, uh, I liked the textures. I like 
what's happening with the drums too. The drums, you know, there's electronic elements to it. So uh, I enjoy it. It was good. Radically different than the first record. And uh, yeah, certainly I would say different from the bends. I'm enjoying it. All right. So um, why don't we continue and... Uh, <laughs> Let's hope I can fucking erase that memory of Bongo from my head. I hope. I hope. Because you guys are going to know what I'm talking about now. From every song that you hear, from all the seven records I'm going to play, we got another. We got this one completely, and then I got another four to play. Okay? Um, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The Bongo factor. And I can tell you one thing. One thing for sure. If the voice doesn't change during that whole time, I am not playing any solo stuff. So I have that one Tom York record at the end. I'm not going to play that. Uh, fuck, and now I feel bad for it. Because you should always listen to something. You always have to listen to it with an open mind before just deciding. No, no, I got to listen to it one way or another. Um, so yeah, what does that mean? Does that mean I like it or I don't? I think I like it. I do. I mean, uh, it's good. And ultimately, I mean, you guys know, my opinion doesn't count for shit. The reason it is that this is interesting is because you're hearing me listen to it for the first time and you're putting yourself in my shoes and trying to remember what it was like for you the first time you heard it. So that's the interesting part. It's not me. So, um, you know, I'd like to, uh, I guess, just draw attention upon the interactive element and uh you know i can see that the chat is crazy busy but yeah make use of the chat absolutely that's what this community is about that's why we're getting so many likes and people are watching as much as they are because they know that whenever it is that we do one of these live broadcasts there's going to be an amazing chat with a bunch of people who have actually gotten to know each other over this time um it's become kind of like our little whack pack you know howard stern pretty fucking cool so, um, if you like this kind of thing, subscribe to the channel and uh, tune in later tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's in like five and a half hours about. And uh, we're going to go through um, the virus broadcasts, day 37. Without alcohol, though. All right. So, um, we're going to get the song too, all right? By the way, I know that some songs, sometimes it's like one song bleeds into another. I completely understand that transition. Uh, my question is, will I be de destroying my experience? I mean, listen, I know that at the end of this entire thing, I got to play the whole record over again. And I will play it all over again from beginning to end, no interruptions. Just exactly the way I did with The Bends and I did not do with Pablo Honey. Um, is there any place where I should just let two songs stay together? I mean, do you have opinions? When it comes to that, because what I was thinking is just I'm going to play every song piece by piece type of thing. And uh, we can kind of just have a big old uh, Radiohead nerd discussion over it. But um, yeah, my biggest fear right now is that I don't know what Tom York looks like. Every time I hear this guy sing, I'm going to think of Bongo. That will be a big spoiler for me. So I'm kind of hoping that, you know, <laughs> they get electronic on his vocals or something like that. Or... Uh, you know, there's something that just unbongofies it for me. All right, man. Paranoid Android. I definitely know the title. I absolutely know the title. There's a video attached to this, right? I think I've seen some images. And I'm wondering if I know the song. I don't think I know it. I'm probably. I I'm thinking maybe I'll catch bits of it or something. But uh, I'm wondering if I really know the song. You know, one of those moments where somebody sings a song and you never know who it is, and then like years later, you're like, "Holy fuck, that's the band who does it." The somehow the only one that's coming to mind is I don't know if you know the song "Green Green Eyed Lady." Boom, 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 ba 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 boom, 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 ba 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 boom, 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 boom. Right? It's fucking awesome. It stays in your head. You know the song. How many people know who sang the damn song? I didn't know until maybe five years ago. Why? Because I picked up a Sugarloaf album. The album cover looked cool. And then I turned around to see the track listing. It's like, fuck, Green Eyed Lady? Really? They're the ones who do Green Eyed Lady? I didn't know. 
So I'm um, wondering if uh, that's what's going to happen here with Paranoid Android. If it's going to be one of those songs that I've known all along, but I didn't know I know. You know what I'm saying? I wonder if this is my next sugar loaf, is what I'm saying. Is this, is this the green-eyed lady of Radiohead for me? That's what I want to know. <laughs> you guys are probably saying, play the fucking song. Yeah, 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 relax. What, you got somewhere to go? You can leave, you know. It's all on Spotify. Go. Get the fuck out of here. We're going to do this the fun way. Get a drink. Relax. We're going to listen to this album. It's my first time. Go gentle on me. Subscribe to the channel, bitches. Where's the like button? Do you know where it is? Like it, bitches.
Was that it? That's it? Just let me know if I should be uh, turning it back on because I stopped it too soon. Yeah, that was awesome. That was good. I uh, <laughs> I keep coming back to the same thing, don't I? I like Johnny Greenwood. Yeah, dude, he, he just added another element that's pretty cool. I can now, that's the first song where I can hear Pink Floyd elements. Um, the break in the middle is kind of cool. Johnny Green was fucking awesome. <laughs> I like his guitar playing. Uh, I, I'm i hearing more post-rock elements than uh, I thought I would hear. I, I wasn't expecting any post-rock elements to Radiohead at all. So, uh, you know... When you think about it, post-rock is basically just heavier Pink Floyd. You know what I'm saying? I mean, The Wall is a post-rock album. Um, but yeah, I'm absolutely digging it. Like, I'm going to listen to this, and now I'm going to look forward to wanting to hear that song. What's it called? Paranoid Android? Is that the one? Yeah, that, uh, that was fucking good. <laughs> that was good. So, okay, I get it. This is the first time now where I hear something and it's like, all right, now I get it a bit, you know? And the fun part about that now is that I know, like, I'm going to look forward to it. You know what I'm saying? It's like now there's a hook there in this record that makes me listen to it. Another really big thing for me is that it didn't sound like Bongo. It didn't, it, I, what, I, I was, at the beginning, I was waiting for it. And then eventually the song just completely took over and I didn't hear Bongo anymore. So that's already an amazing thing. Okay. Um, all right. I'm curious to hear what the rest is going to be like. I can obviously hear that there's a lot of, um, there's a bit of a continuity in terms of this feel. And the textures are new compared to what it is that they did before. I'm hearing certainly more electronic textures than before. I'm hearing more effects on the guitar. I'm hearing layers, you know. And, um, I mean, it certainly makes it so I could, I, I understand that I got to listen to this thing the whole way through. It's not fair to be listening to it the way we're listening to it right now. But, I mean, that's the point of the show, right? But, um... All right, I dug this. I dug this. Um, hey, can I ask you guys to do me one better? Like the like this if you like the, if you're if you're enjoying it, like it. I am reading all your comments. Uh, share it with other Radiohead fans. And are you part of any Radiohead groups, for example? You know, share them in your Radiohead groups, and uh, let's see if. Uh, I'm very, very curious. I, I, I want to be able to kind of like connect with as many Radiohead fans as possible. Because I want to, like, I, I'm, I'm super interested in reading the conversation that's happening right now. I'm, and, and like once the next song comes on, I'm quickly going to look through all of the comments like, all right, you know, did I miss something? That kind of thing. Why? For no other reason that it's fun to do. I mean, that's what appreciation of art is. Again. The proper way is to listen to a record all the way through without interruption. That is the proper way. Okay? So doing it this way is kind of like ass backwards. But the show can't be done any other way, right? First impression has to be a first impression. So uh, please forgive uh, my interruptions. You see? And that actually says something about the language that I'm using now too. Because forgive my interruptions is kind of like, well, I want to listen to the entire record. Okay, and I'm hearing the way I'm talking, and I'm talking with a certain amount of enthusiasm. So, that's a fun thing. I don't have any more fucking alcohol. All right. Uh, so, what we're going to do now is listen to... Uh, am I doing okay here, or am I completely fucking destroying this? <laughs> I don't know, man. It's just, I'm an old man who listens to a lot of records, so this is what I hear, you know? Um... Subterranean Homesick Alien. Is there any analogy here to Subterranean Homesick Blues? All right. We got androids in Song 2 and we got aliens in Song 3, eh? So, that certainly paints a certain picture. It paints, uh, in terms of the electronics, it paints a certain picture of what maybe I'm expecting 
when you hear the same type of theme or when you see the same type of theme on two songs, you tell yourself, okay, there's probably an overarching theme to the entire record. I don't know if there is. Again, I've never listened to it before, but now after see, hearing two songs and reading the titles to three songs, you know, I'm beginning to think maybe is there some kind of art overarching theme, kind of like Pink Floyd, The Wall. Okay. I guess uh, that remains to be seen. I know I'm talking a lot. What do you want me to tell you? I got thoughts. That's why you're watching the fucking thing. You know the album already. You've heard it. Spotify, bitches, go. If you want to hear the music. All right. So um, we're going to move on, all right? Subterranean Homesick Alien. The title reminds me of uh, Who's Got Planet Sauvage? Fantastic Planet. Alain Goraguer. It reminds me of a, a title that would fit on uh, that soundtrack.
So that's the end of side one, eh? That was great. I mean, I've listened to so much music for so many different moods that I kind of know what, what what the signals are. The reason it is that I own 6,000 records is because um, I don't connect to human beings. Well, now I do. But as a kid, I didn't connect just most of my life. I didn't connect to human beings as well as I connected to art. So art was the best way that I can communicate with music. And it was easier to be vulnerable with art and rage with art. You know, these were all safe. Art, art is safe space. Okay. So the reason it is that my collection is pretty much 6,000 records now is because I've spent my entire life looking for the soundtrack to every fucking emotion and subset of subset of emotion and thought that I've ever experienced over the course of my life. I want to be able to soundtrack every fucking moment I have. Um, like we can have a conversation for 30 seconds and I want to be able to soundtrack that 30 seconds. Uh, I kind of have that symbiotic thing with music, which is why, I mean, I guess I pull stories out of my ass sometimes and it goes from one thing to another because to me it is all the same thing. It's just basically 50 years of listening to music, uh, you know, <laughs> far more than most people or just paying attention to it far, far more than most people. I mean, when I wasn't doing this kind of job, talking about music and playing music for you and doing vinyl junkies, everything I was doing was a distraction to doing exactly this. Um, the reason I'm saying this is because I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty tuned in, very, very tuned in to my personal cues when I listen to music. And um, at the end, that kind of like dreamy passage made me go and pick up a joint and make sure that, you know, and take a haul off of it because it puts me there so that's a very fucking good thing i dig it uh that's fun to me it's really super fucking powerful that i'm listening to this for the first time with you guys it's it's a super powerful thing i got goosebumps because it's like you know you remember your first time this is my fucking first time it's 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 kind of mind-blowing i i i didn't expect this. This is fucking great. Give me a sec, okay? Yeah, sorry. Um, so, Brooke, um, you sent me uh, an important album, and uh, <laughs> it's been fucking tough for all of us during this entire thing, so uh, <laughs> this emotional release is nice. I feel thankful, okay? Uh, you bought me a record that, uh, I get it. I guess I get it. Sorry. Uh, side two. From your sleep, the dry of your tears today, we escape. Oh, hell breaks. 
Yeah. So you see that little computer thingy? Just that little um, synth piece? I really liked that. Uh, that all of a sudden took everything into Krautrock territory. And um, I mean, I've never heard anything beyond what I just listened to right now. But of course, I mean, over the years, I mean, I know the history. I know, I know, I know how how well loved this record is, and um, so I kind of know what's to come. But it's like now, I kind of like okay, now what's next? Kind of thing. Um, what it's also done is, um, I'm pretty sure that. Uh, <laughs> Like, I've, I decided pretty much right off that I didn't want to ever listen to Pablo Honey again. <laughs> and the bends, I was kind of like in between. And I'm listening to this and realize, nah, man, it's just, this is, to me, this is where it is that it got interesting. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, I listen to a lot of music type of thing. And uh, I want the music to make me feel something right away. You know, I don't have to be a fanboy and go to the albums that don't do that for me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, what I'm saying is that I don't, I, I, I don't have enough years left in my life, and there's too much good music for me to start being completist about something that I'm not completely. You know, it's like if I don't feel it, I don't feel it. Period. So here, I obviously feel something. And another thing that I um, noticed, I made the analogy on yesterday's show. Right? Uh, I made the analogy of. Um, how when you make a stew and the ingredients that you put in something you need to let it sit you can tell if you're preparing a meal that takes four hours and half an hour you can tell because the ingredients don't mix very well the longer it is that it gets to sit the more the ingredients mix the reason it is that i'm mentioning that is tom york's voice um i'm hearing like I'm not even hearing bongo. Like, I, I I, don't look for it anymore. Now I don't look for it anymore. Um, so that's a good thing. And I'm pretty sure that the reason for that is obviously, I mean, he's got better mastery of his, uh, you know, vocal range. And, you know, just like any artist, you work at your art until you just get better. But um, the fact that there's so many other layers also happening in the music kind of uh again those are the other ingredients that kind of mix before before it's kind of like pablo honey felt so much like a boy band uh, you know i absolutely know why i don't like that record <laughs> fucking bongo is one reason and another it just it feels like let's put together a band you know and let's put all these cut and paste pieces together so that we can sell a few million copies to some fucking dopes. Um, and here it's not like that at all. I mean, I like it. I it's it's. I, I, I can't wait to hear more. And I'm trying as much as possible to soak in this entire atmosphere. You know, it's like, you know, when you sit down at a really good meal. All right. You don't want to eat your meal in 15 minutes. That's not the point. The point is not to satiate your appetite immediately. The point is to enjoy the entire experience of eating a proper meal, the entire um, ceremony of serving it properly on nice plates and enjoying one course after another, passing plates around. There's an entire, there's an entire thing that goes into good music. And... Um, it's extremely powerful to me that that's kind of what's happening to me right now. Like, I mean, this is basically just, you know, I feel like I'm eating dinner with friends. And, you know, I'm the only guy, I'm, I'm, it feels like at least I'm the only guy here who doesn't know this record. And, um, you know, yeah, I guess I, I get emotional because for me... Any new music, any really good new music that moves me uh, is a blessing in my life.
it's just I can't live without this. I mean, so you know, you guys want to know why? Well, you know, why do I have patrons? Why do people, you know, join Patreon? Because this is what I do, man. It's one of the things that made me emotional about the whole thing is because I was feeling the music. I know that I was in a room full of people who feel the same way. I know that I'm in a room full of people who support this type of programming and appreciate it. And I'm feeling it all for the first time. You combine that with the you combine that with the fact that it's been a very mentally grueling month for all of us. Month plus. We're going on to what day 37 of the virus broadcasts. That's 37 days together. That's craziness. I fucking thank God that I have these broadcasts. They're keeping me sane, man. They're keeping me fucking sane. And um, to be able to experience something like this for the first time, this is, I mean, obviously, I don't want it to end. That's the deal, man. It's just I'm trying to savor it as much as possible because I know that this is a moment in time I'm going to remember forever. So, uh, it's a, it's such a fucking privilege to do this for you guys. It is. I, uh, cause I can't do anything else, man. This is who I am. This is what I love. And, uh, it's a real fucking privilege to listen to this music and, uh, you know, feel it with you. Thanks. Thanks for making me understand. <laughs> All right. So what are we listening to next? Uh, what the fuck are we, <laughs> what are we listening to? What are we, li what, uh, can you guys tell me <laughs> what the next song is? I don't I don't know man, I ran out. Of, I'm just waiting for you guys to tell me what the next song is. Hey, give the video a like if you're enjoying it. Consider buying it in the shop. Vinyljunkies.store. I'm a poor fucking schlep with a family to feed and if you want to become a patron then uh, thanks man. I can't do anything but fucking put my heart out for this because I live for this, you know, but uh, it's... Uh, this is one of the greatest moments of my life. <laughs> uh, what fucking song am I looking at, dude? Somebody gonna tell me? I'm done singing. <laughs> I'm, done, I'm done crying. I feel fucking stupid. But, uh, it's been a hard bunch of days, man, you know? I fucking get on all the time because I feel I gotta do it. I just, I have to, both for myself. But it's just, it's just like, like, after a while, it's like you're taking one punch after another. It fucking gets exhausting on the brain, man. What song is this? The next song is Karma Police? Is that what you're telling me? Okay, well, if the next song is Karma Police, then I'm going to understand because I know the chorus of Karma Police, and I may have seen a clip. I may have seen a clip of a video. Is that a video with um, animation? I may have seen a clip of Karma Police, but the only thing that I remember at this point is Tom York, Karma Police. That's it. Um... And it's another one of those Sugarloaf songs for me. In the sense that I've heard the title a bunch of times, I know the chorus, um, or whatever. But I wonder if I already know the entire song and it's like I just didn't know that it was Radiohead. I don't think so, though. I really don't think that's going to be the case. So it'll uh, be interesting to hear and uh, find out. I'm... Uh, gonna take another swig and uh use my lighter is that okay thank you so very much for sharing this moment with me uh it means everything to me man this is uh probably the highlight it's just amazing just thanks humble thanks to everybody that supports what i do
what you'll get when you mess with us. I didn't hear the entire song. I heard, I, I don't know. I hear like the first part there. I heard it, but the entire ending, um, if it's familiar to me, it's very vaguely familiar. So, uh, you know, to me, I, I, I would call, I would qualify that kind of like as a first listen. I mean, it's a pretty outstanding first listen. Um, the production's pretty great. <laughs> the layering, man. Uh, it's, it's very well done. Very well done. I mean, uh, I gotta listen to it again. I gotta listen to it all the way through. I think what I um, might do is, because these videos, look, I mean, if you're not watching live, it's gone. This is gone. Okay? The minute we get off air... YouTube is going to take this down in 20 minutes. So those of you that are watching, thank you for being here and just being in the moment. Uh, what it is that I thought of doing is um, taking, I don't know, if, well, tell me what you think, but the only other option that I would have is um, maybe taking the videos that have been taken down and just scrubbing out the music. So just editing out all of the music and just keeping the dialogue it's not the same thing. I can maybe add two seconds here and two seconds there kind of thing. I can see what the rule is for how much they'll allow you without taking you down. I can do that kind of thing, but um, I don't know. There's a running commentary, even of interest. I don't know. Dude, man, all I'm trying to do is uh, deliver the most, uh, I don't know. I'm trying to deliver content that uh, matters the people who love music for no other reason that we love music 
That's it. You know. Why don't we move on here? I'm going to keep working on that same turntable because um, my first turntable has not been calibrated yet. I've told myself many times that I must do that, but I um, haven't gotten around to it. But I think today I'm going to, um, right after this show, I'm going to calibrate my turntable in time for tonight's show. Tonight is the virus broadcasts day 37. 37 fucking days in a row that we've been doing this man it's gonna go on in five hours just under five hours so i'm hoping that um you know you've subscribed to the channel if you enjoy the broadcast this one and uh that you'll join us tonight well tonight here in montreal canada but wherever you're at in in approximately four actually exactly four hours and 50 minutes um I don't focus on one record, we just play a bunch of songs and have some drinks together, listen to music, and act stupid. And uh, I think it helps us get by. It helps me get by, that's for sure. So, why don't I continue with uh, side three of this record, which is Miney. Please like it if you like what we're doing here. Please consider supporting it either by uh, buying something from the shop, becoming a VJ patron at patreon.com slash vinyl junkies. And um, even a kind word counts. The karma bank is valuable. So um, people, people do good to each other uh, in ways more that are uh, that, that are not just monetary karma counts a kind word counts um, so whatever support it is that you give to this show and to me I thank you and my family thanks you and I'm pretty sure the entire community thanks you because it's because of you guys that we can do this all right we're gonna listen to side three what song are we up to Sorry, I gotta check, man. I don't know the names of the song. Yeah, you know, you know, I don't want to repeat. Where are we at? Electioneering. This is gonna be a political song, isn't it? All right, I'm gonna put it on. I got water all over everything. I gotta really get, go get a towel. My ice is just melting everywhere. This Canadian delicious ice of, of mine. As I drink the remnants of the last drops of Chivas. Let's do this. Electioneering. I hope you're enjoying yourselves. Crappier. Whoop. Alright, let's try that again. Better, happier, more productive, comfortable, not drinking too much, regular exercise at the gym, three days a week, getting on better with your associate employee contemporaries, at ease, eating well, no more microwave dinners and saturated fats. A patient better driver, a safer car, baby smiling in backseat, sleeping well, no bad dreams, no paranoia, careful to all animals, never washing spiders done a plug hole, keep in contact with old friends, enjoy a drink now and then, will frequently check credit at, moral, bank, hole in wall, favors for favors, fond but not in love, charity standing orders, on Sundays reading Road Supermarket. No killing lots or putting boiling water on the hands. Car wash. Also on Sundays. No longer afraid of the dark. Only day shadows nothing. So ridiculously too late and desperate nothing. So childish. At a better pace. Slower and more calculated. No chance of escape. Now self-employed. Concerned. But powerless. An empowered and informed member of society. Pragmatism, not idealism. Will not cry in public. Less chance of illness. Tires that grip in the wet. Shot of baby strapped in backseat. A good memory. Still cries at a good film. Still kisses with saliva. No longer empty and frantic. Like a cat. Tied to a stick. That's driven into. Frozen winter shit. The ability to laugh at weakness. Calm. Fitter. Healthier, and more productive, a pig, in a cage, on antibiotics.
That was awesome. That was very garagey. I like the interlude. I mean, one didn't exactly melt into the other type of thing, but sort of. Because uh, the electronic elements are still there, but uh, the other elements are kind of um, making me feel fucking white stripes ish. There's just a garagey feel to it that uh, is another thing I wasn't expecting. I like that. I don't know, man. I was expecting... Um, I was expecting it to sound like 1997. Fucking post-grunge. Ugh. I was expecting it... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just remember a lot of the post-grunge bands, everybody, like the... I remember that entire scene being beaten to death. You know? I couldn't get into bands like Silver Chair for that reason. It's just... It felt like, nah. You know? You're fucking jiving me. Uh, that's the way I felt about Stone Temple Pilots' first record. See, the thing is, is though I like the other Stone Temple Pilot, I like the... Um, Vatican Gift Shop. I have that one. I really like that record. And um, Silver Chair. The dude who's in Silver Chair went on to make a really fucking amazingly catchy psychedelic acid dream pop band called the Polyphonic Spree. And I so badly want Polyphonic Spree records. Like, after I'm done here, basically, I have to go check on the store and see if we have any because they're fucking awesome. But I know that it's, uh, it's not stuff that you see a lot. So the thing is, is that there is a difference, you know, in the artists. After listening to this, for example, I think about my statement just earlier on when this broadcast began, how I said that um, if he keeps sounding like Bongo... It's just I'm not going to listen to any of his uh, solo stuff. I'm not yet convinced that I need to listen to that. On the other hand, all right, it's not the same, you know, it's not the same ball game anymore. It's not the same thing. It doesn't sound the same at all to me. Uh, I dig it, you know? So, um, am I getting this or not? <laughs> I don't even know myself. What are we listening to now? Is it climbing, climbing the walls? Is that next, or is it the, or no surprises? What is the name of the next song? I, I guess I'll wait for one of you to kind of um, tell me what the name of the next song is, so you keep me on track. If you haven't liked our uh, stream yet, please give it a like. If you enjoy this kind of programming, please subscribe to the channel, Vinyl Junkies. You see that little burger over there? Go get yourself a burger. Smash that burger. Smash it down. Smash it down. It'll make you feel good. I will fucking nutritionate you with musical stupidities and knowledge and stories and anecdotes told in real time with the most amazing live community you will ever be a part of. No bullshit in this community. Everyone here loves music. That's what this is. That's what we do, man. So, the next song is Climbing Up the Walls. That's the one I'm going to play. I want to see more likes, please. You don't have to, but please. And I'd like to see you guys subscribe. I hope I earned that. Right? Let's do Climbing the Walls.
That was amazing. That was amazing. Um, this entire experience is making me feel the Lee Hazelwood experience. I'll explain what I mean by that. I think uh, anybody who listens to the show a lot or knows me for a long time knows just I love Lee Hazelwood. Um, Rob Martell, his brother-in-law, his, fa- uh, his son-in-law is a, is a member of our group. Samantha Hazelwood, his daughter, is a member of our group. These people support Vinyl Junkie. So, I mean, besides the fact that I began with that music 25 years ago and it's just stuck with me and it's been the soundtrack of my life, um, makes it so that I have a certain relationship with it. There's a certain familiarity. And uh, the thing about good country music and the thing about Lee Hazelwood is that they're storytellers. The music tells you a story and it puts you through a certain feeling so when it is that I talked about why I still collect records even though I have so many is because I like to have a soundtrack for every single moment emotion thought and process of my life and there's one particular process that I connect to Lee Hazelwood which just happened right now um, Because I've gotten to know Samantha Hazelwood a little bit, but more, a a whole lot more, I've gotten to know Rob Martell, which is Samantha Hazelwood's um, husband, Lee Hazelwood's son-in-law, right? The music takes on on an added meaning. So what wound up happening as we started these types of broadcasts, right? Um, I was doing these broadcasts every single day, and I have been doing them every single day for the past 37 days now. Okay, we call them the virus broadcasts. So, if you subscribe to the channel, you're going to see you're, uh, you're, you're going to get invited to the virus broadcasts as well. They happen every night. It's going to happen in what? 3 and a half hours again. And it's I've never been a drinker of hard liquor. I'm a beer drinker if anything, and even then I don't drink very much. Uh I'm a pot smoker. That's what I like. I love smoking pot. You know? Um, but because of what it is that we've done together, because of my connection, my deep love of Lee Hazelwood's music, having read his biography, having known as part of his family, as a matter of fact, here, you know what? It just connects perfectly right now. Check this, man. I mean, I'm not sure if you can see it on camera, but what I'm holding up is I'm holding up a Lee Hazelwood, uh, CD copy of Cowboy in Sweden, and if you flip it over, his signature's on it. I'm pretty sure it doesn't show up on the camera, okay? But Samantha Hazelwood sent me that. I mean, it's one of the last things that Lee Hazelwood autographed because she knows the feeling that I have, okay? So it's because of all of this, this relationship that I have with Lee Hazelwood and the music and the fact that, like, my family all knows this stuff because I play it to death. My daughter has been singing Lee Hazelwood since she was fucking two years old. Some of the first songs she ever sang were Hey Cowboy, Summer Wine. So, you know, the memories, the attachments to that music are are, are deep. And when we feel that way, you know, like those bedrock artists for us, those roots branch out on a whole bunch of other things and they cause you to do these really strange things at least for me it just creates this really interesting web but more than a web it's kind of like just a tree that has roots and lee hazelwood is one of those basic fucking huge branches down at the bottom you know and um i never drank any hard stuff until now basically the uh Chivas, the drinking of Chivas began with the virus broadcasts. And um, it's now become something that uh, I do. And the reason I do it is because after reading Lee Hazelwood's biography, I discovered that he was a big Chivas drinker, Chivas on ice. And I'm really romantic when it comes to those types of things. Like, I connect way more to those types of things than I do to actual human beings. Um, For example, Tom Waits. Um, Tom Waits is something that I put on driving to and from a festival. One time, 
in the middle of the night, the Victoriaville uh, uh, Actuel Festival, which is really crazy jazz. But I drove in the middle of the night and I made sure that when I got in that car, I had Tom Waits with me because Tom Waits made me feel like that lonely, quiet drive. And I knew that the chances were good that if I listened to all of that, that I would run into a roadside cafe where I can get a cup of coffee and a slice of pie or breakfast in, you know, one of those big ceramic mugs and I can sit at the counter. And the reason it is that I want to do that is because I have this romanticized notion of Tom Waits and what this music means to me. And so I have that association with Chivas. The association that I have with Chivas is 1000% Lee Hazelwood. And I'm pretty sure that I, 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 I'm not going to be any more of a drinker. I just have become a Chivas drinker because of the music and because of the virus broadcast and us doing this together. Okay. Um, that's a long story. I hope that it was somewhat entertaining. How does that connect to, um, how does that connect to Radiohead and what we just listened to right now? I'll tell you. What's the name of the song that we just listened to? Climbing Up the Walls. Um, it reminded me exactly of that moment. Right as the song began, you know the feeling of a come down, right? You drink only so much. Like you drink and it's just like you don't just keep going. There's, there's, there's the come down. If those of you who know Lee Hazel would know the song, If It's Monday Morning... Right? There's a taste here in my mouth when it's Monday morning. Anyway, I'm not, if, you know, if you know Lee Hazelwood, then you know the song. There's a come down. And I associate it very tightly to now this kind of come down. Because I've had a drink every single night with you guys. So I know what that come down feels like. And there's a certain familiarity that always connects me to Lee Hazelwood. Uh, that last song that we heard is exactly where I was when I listened to that song. So climbing up the walls is exactly where it is that we were as I was coming down on that Lee Hazelwood kind of feeling. You know, that feeling that I usually associate with Lee Hazelwood. And I was just coming down, and then the music kind of just spiked me, and I took a draw off the joint, and it's like, no, nah, man, we're not done here yet, you know? If anything, now it's kind of like... Where's my next drink? So, when it is that I can spend five or ten minutes talking about all of this stuff and a song makes me feel that, it's got me. It's got me. So this now is a Chivas song. And I know how this is, dude. I know how the fuck this works for me. I know my brain so well when it comes to music. I know how this is going to work for me. I'm going to fucking start playing this goddamn record. And I'm going to start connecting the Chivas with the alcohol, with the virus broadcasts, with everything that we're doing here. And it's just, it just gave me the fucking biggest goosebumps of my entire life. So it's, it's just amazing when you listen to something and it's like you're blown away by the fact that it's already you know the first fucking time that i listened to fucking bitches brew it's like what you know uh it's really cool so i can already see i can already see that there is a um there is a history that will begin here. I don't need the other two. But there is a history that be will begin here. And I, even though I haven't even gotten through the entire record yet, I already know that I'm going to listen to it immediately after. And that I'm going to want to listen to it as much as possible. Uh, because I know that I'm going to play Kid. Is Kid A the next one? I, w w which one what's the next one i'm playing by the way uh the next one isn't going to be played tomorrow it's going to be played on monday okay so tomorrow is sunday i believe or, who fucking remembers anymore with everything yeah we're t saturday today so no sunday sunday is uh, a patrons only broadcast it's a sunday mass 
patrons only private broadcast and uh, we kind of hang out and quite frankly it's the best show of the week so uh that means that you guys will get the next radiohead album on monday afternoon at 2 p.m i don't know what the next one is i've been waiting for one of you guys to mention kid a okay very good so yeah so in other words i know that i got two days to absorb this album and i want to absorb it as much as possible why because i try to put myself in the situation where i place myself i listen to this record when it just came out and give myself that two years how many years was there between ok computer and kid a i try to give myself that period of time and all of a sudden i can imagine that the anticipation for the next record off of this must have been unfucking believable so i don't have those years i don't have all that time to get that so it's kind of like i already know i'm kind of obsessive type of thing i already know that what i'm going to wind up doing is i'm going to kind of wind up force feeding myself the album for the next two days so that i can be fully cognizant of the trip that i might be going on that trip is i mean what i've heard up to now but but that trip basically is you guys you guys are the ones that kind of told me what the path is forward so now now i finally understand i'm finally in the car okay and i understand all right now i'm excited about where we're going now i want to know okay so if we use the analogy of the car ride pablo honey was you got to get me out of this fucking car all i hear is you two i want to stab my ears i couldn't do it then we went to what's the other one the bends that we did that one yesterday right i listened to that one and i was expecting better and it was better than the first one but still hearing too much bongo still not so much but you know not so much I, 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 whatever and um that brings us to today and okay computer and it's like ah i don't know what the destination is i don't know where we're going it doesn't fucking matter it doesn't matter i'm gonna do it right i'm gonna do this right i'm gonna listen to this fucking record as often as i can until monday until monday because i gotta be able to cram into my brain as much of the experience and i have to be able to try to understand as as much of the little intricacies that you guys have had 23 years to absorb i gotta try to absorb as much of that as possible immerse myself in it because I got 23 years to catch up on. You follow what I'm saying? Why would I do that? Because I'm a music nerd. Why would I do that? Because this is what I do. This is my life. I love music. I hear something. I know where. Okay, I get it now. I know where we're going. We're going somewhere good. Great. Let's fucking do this. You know what I mean? Now I'm excited. That's why I'm made to do this motherfucking job. That's why people support me. That's why people buy from my store. And that's why they're patrons. So patreon.com slash vinyl junkies. Become a VJ patron. I'll keep doing it. I'm happy. Very fucking happy. You know why? Because I know I'm never going to forget this. I know that this is a fucking moment. A very important moment. For me. And I'm enjoying the ride. And you know what? I got fucking 53 friends with me god damn am i lucky god damn and i get to talk to you and i get to see what you have to say and i get to share my excitement with you and you share your excitement with me baby that's what this is about that's why i do vj radio so it's pirate radio that means that the copyright dicks are going to take this down right after all of this is done so you got to watch it live but that's vinyl, right? Vinyl is a moment in time. Radio is a moment in time. Enjoy it. Let's do this together and we'll remember that we did it together. And I would like to say to each of you, 53, there are 54 people. Okay? Thank you for being a part of this because this is just an enormous moment for me. As somebody who loves music, somebody somebody who's um, dedicated his entire life to it now, who came from being a banker and miserable to being this guy it's what are you fucking kidding this is the pinnacle of my career 
I mean, this is the best thing that's ever happened to me. You. You. Me and 55 of you. God damn. That's the way you listen to a fucking ra That's the way you listen to a record. Thank you for this. Seriously, thank you for this. I won't forget. I won't forget. You have my deep gratitude for supporting what I do. Deep gratitude. I'll keep doing this. As a matter of fact, you want to know what? Is there any other band that you think I should know? That I might not know? You, you know what might surprise you? You know who the, the band that I don't know? You want to know an album I've never listened to? What's uh, My Bloody Valentine? That big blo uh, My Bloody B Valentine record. I've never heard that record. So there are some records that I've never heard before. You know? All right. I'm going to keep this going. I got to pace these, man. I've been talking so long. Just sorry, man. It's just I love music. We're on the last song of side three. What song are we at, bro? Uh, bro, you hear that? That tells you that I'm having a good time here with you. Fucking awesome. What are we listening to? No surprises. Lucky the tourist. Probably no surprises. Guys, share this motherfucker. Let's do something good. Subscribe to the motherfucking channel. This is the way radio's done. This is the way re this is the way records are sold. Thank you. And if all record stores, all record store day owners, all record store owners and all record store day people. I love you. I love what you do. Thank you for being a gathering place for art where people like me couldn't get along with others, just didn't feel normal, didn't feel connected to human beings the way I connected to art. Thank you for giving me that place, the record stores, Cheap Thrills. I fucking grew up in Cheap Thrills in Montreal. I grew up in that store. I started shopping at Cheap Thrills when I was fucking 12 years old. 1982. You know? So, it's uh, it becomes part of your fabric. What it is that I'm trying to do over here is I, I'm way too fucking miserable to own a record store. This is the only way I could do it virtually. Okay? So, um, thank you for letting me carve out this niche and uh, serving you. It's appreciated, man. Sorry, I gotta get it all out of me. I guess it's the music, everything. This is just amazing. All right, guys, we're gonna continue. <laughs>
there's one comment that uh, I keep seeing come up that's uh, absolutely reinforced my resolve to become as familiar, as intimately familiar with this record as I could possibly become in the next two days. Uh, I've seen the comment come up uh, a, a good handful of times now, and that is many of you are saying that um, this is a record uh, whose content, whose lyrics uh, seems very relevant to what we're all collectively going through together. Uh, you know, which is, I mean, listen, it's a time of great anxiety. There's no doubt. That greatly pleases me. Because uh, now you gave me something to look for. You understand? I'm going to start looking at the lyrics now. Here's where we find the first problem. You guys are all listening to you. It's like, what problem? Yeah, I'll tell you. I'll tell you one problem that I see immediately. No lyrics. Here? But I think they're in the middle. Yeah, the lyrics are in the middle. Look at how small these fucking lyrics are. I mean, okay, I understand. They're left and right and upside down and all this. Um, sure. Artistically, I guess it looks nice, but lyrics are meant to be uh, read. This shit's way too fucking tiny. I mean, okay, I'm 50 years old, but what? You don't have any 50-year-old fans? Jesus Christ, I need a... F I need a magnifying glass. So, that's frustrating. Because I know that now I've removed a certain uh, vinyl experience. And that is sitting with the record and reading the lyrics. Seriously, dude, it's just... I mean... The font, and there's all sorts of space, right? The font is so small that it looks like, uh, you know, like trying to read a fucking barcode. Like, with the blind eye. So, that's frustrating. That's That doesn't make any sense to me, because, I mean, everything about the music itself is substantive, right? All of you are making comments which are certainly super prevalent uh, to me. Prevalent, Jesus Christ, to me. Um... I'm interested in knowing what those lyrics are. I'm interested in digging deeper and finding out what it is that makes you guys say that this record would apply so much to this anxiety that we're all living right now. And I can't really do that because the lyrics are too fucking small. So it kind of sucks, you know? I mean, I'll listen more clo closely, but uh, I don't have—I I, I don't have a, a magnifying glass. It's one of the worst, it's one of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to buying records. Don't, what are you trying to cram it all in? Fucking pay for an extra page for fuck's sake. Let, I want to read this property, comfortable. You remember the newspaper? The newspaper, the font was always so pleasant to read. Just, you're making it impossible. What do you think? You think you, you think anybody just enjoys sitting there with a fucking magnifying glass reading the lyrics? Come on, man. So that's my only pet peeve. You can you can consider this the interlude as we uh, get ready to listen to the final side. Do you like the content? Where are my likes? You guys going to like this video or what? Are you going to subscribe to this channel or what? All right, side four, last two songs. What do I have in store for me? Lucky and The Tourist. Okay, let's listen to Lucky. Thanks for uh, taking this journey with me.
Um, I hear bongo again. <laughs> yeah, I hear bongo again. It doesn't kill me completely though because um, I know that it exists within the context of an entire record. So, and, and it's all right. I'm not gonna get too fucking nitpicky. Just uh, it's a first listen too, right? And if you listen to an entire CD and you don't like only one song, or you listen to an entire two LP set and you don't like one song, that's all right. That's all right. I don't know. I don't. I'm not saying I don't like it. I don't know. I just don't know. All I know is that uh, the aroma. I smelled bongo. I smelled bongo. So, yeah. All of a sudden, I'm going back and forth on Tom York's uh, solo material. That aroma, you know, I don't want it. I don't want it in my nostrils. It put it, it puts a hurting on my nose. You follow what I'm saying? It's like stink foot. It's exactly like stink foot. Was for Frank Zappa. It puts a hurting on my nose. So, um, I don't know. We're down to the last song. I would like to say that um, I'm going to give you a full review of the entire thing at the end, right? After I listen to this entire thing, I'm going to tell you um, what I thought about the entire thing. I'm going to tell you about whether it is that I would buy it today. Because I got it. I mean, Brooke sent this kind of gamey sent this uh one of our patrons thank you brooke once again it's just all of us owe this entire thing to you sending me the two records i was missing in the collection okay the way this entire journey started was uh i've had five i've had five records five radiohead records for about six months because i received them as promo um and uh well i received them to do some quality control testing and that kind of thing and um I never listened to them and the reason is because I knew that there were records missing and the two records I was missing to have the first seven is OK Computer I didn't have OK Computer and I didn't have Amnesiac so uh, that's what's kept me from doing it when you guys found out that that was the case basically kind of gave me who's a, a huge uh, fan of Radiohead just said fuck it and uh he went to vinyljunkies.store he bought the damn things and he sent them and it's because of that that i'm doing these records now one a day up to the second last one i don't have moon shaped uh moon uh pool shaped moon is that the name of it i don't have that um but um you know that's how this entire thing got started and i'm deeply appreciative we're going to listen to the last song. I'm going to tell you my last thoughts after that. And uh, hey, give it a like if you like it. Become a subscriber to the channel if you like this kind of content. Because I ain't done tonight. The Virus Broadcasts. Day 37. Day 37. Can you fucking believe it? Of the Virus Broadcasts. Goes on in exactly four hours. Alright. Let's do this. The Grand Finale. The Tourist.
Is that it? All right. I dig the record. I mean, it's pretty obvious. I guess uh, there's not that much... Um, I find myself tired. <laughs> it's just... Uh, there was a little bit of an emotional roller coaster these last two hours. Again, given you know the current situation that we're all in, uh, the fact that I've been grinding this shit out every single day since, and I, I mean, I'm committed to it, so... You know, when Brooke says, uh, hey, you know, you just take the night off, it's like, fuck no. I can't. You don't do that, man. It's just, you step up. We hang out. This gets me through my day, and it gets you through your day. So I got to keep doing it, and, uh, you know, we'll remember it forever. We'll remember where we were. Almost certainly remember the conversation that we just had here together. It's, uh... It's just a highlight of Vinyl Junkies for me right now. So thank you so very much for being part of it. Uh, we won't be doing this uh, tomorrow. We're going to be doing it only on Monday at 2 p.m. the same time. Tomorrow is Sunday Mass number 19. That is for patrons only. Patreon.com slash Vinyl Junkies. If you wish to support the show for even $2 a month, 100% perfect with that it's not the dollar amount that matters if you don't have it you don't have it that's okay that's not what community about what community is about is you do your small part whatever part that is i believe enough in that so um i'm happy to have found a huge group of people like you who uh, feel that way too because uh it allows me to keep doing this kind of programming and um being able to pay my bills and feed my family so from the bottom of my heart thank you very much i'm telling you right now okay less than four hours we're back here less than four hours it's the virus broadcasts you're gonna see me put it up right after this the virus broadcasts number 50 enough number 50 number 37 i'm sorry my brain's not working very well because i'm just tired uh this was an emotional roller coaster and i enjoy it but i kind of uh i need a, i need a fucking i, I need to just th th this was th this was something i won't forget is what i'm trying to tell you all right <sighs> all right folks i'm gonna say goodbye for now go take a nap and uh i'll see you in less than four hours we'll do this all over again